Yeah. So I look forward to seeing how historians react to it. Right, I mean, we'll see. I, mean, I, I, I think that I was expecting to have some historical criticism from historians who were just disinclined to include psychology and psychiatry in history. But instead, what we've had is a very immediate uh, negative reaction from people in the world of the arts, arts and letters who seem disinclined to let science in general um, be part of our discussion. Of the well, I think we talk about creativity, which gets back to the, the issue that you're looking at, mm -hmm. right? and ability to, that, that there's a big stake in the notion that, although they, they have made this connection many times, Fitz, about Fitzgerald or mm -hmm. Hemingway or other people, mm -hmm. that there's a relationship between their creativity and their depression, or mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. right? That somehow or other, the idea um, that that um, this would carry over to politics, they find. I don't think they want um, you know any of these people to be put, you know, Van Gogh to be like political leader. Even yeah. though it does seem like some of the current nominees. Well, yeah, it's, it, it's interesting because it's been well proven also in studies that artists and writers have much higher levels of mood disorders than general population control groups. So I expected you know, writers and artists to be able to understand what I was saying. But maybe one factor is, as you said, people might be more willing to accept that people on the periphery of society, the writers and the artists, can have these conditions. But to say it's the political leaders, the business leaders, the military leaders, the ones in the very center of society who hold the, uh, the, 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 hold the power, that I think is more disconcerting. Although yet it seems surprising that these people would be critical of that since they're very critical of politicians and leadership to begin with. Yeah. And they often think that they're crazy. I mean, much more, right. I, I, would, I would bet more, not, more humanists would think that Richard Nixon's crazy you than John Kennedy is. Yeah, you know what's interesting about this is that um, people who are in the left liberal uh, wing of our culture, and uh, I don't disagree with them uh, socially or culturally, they're very open and progressive about racism, sexism, homosexuality, for instance, but they don't even think twice about the fact of making prejudice, stigmatizing comments in relation to mental illness. Well, it's not that surprising if you think about it. I work in public health, and two of the illnesses we're trying to cure here all the time, one is cigarette smoking, and they discriminate against cigarette smokers who are using caffeine as self-medication, mm -hmm. and even though they turn out to be poor, non-white, and who desperately need medication, their solution is to charge them more health care money and make it hard for them to get the health care they need when we know that's why they're continuing to smoke. The other is the obesity epidemic. I had a student who went around and tried to explain to, um, to all the other public health students, show them that most people are overweight. The, the term obese itself is so loaded. That, but most people, are, and if, there's, if, they're, um, if someone is morbidly obese, it's not because they ate themselves. So, in terms of overweight, although the evidence shows that being overweight is not necessarily a tremendous threat to health, in fact, it can be protective. And also, the reason that some people are heavy and others has only to do with their genetics and almost nothing to do with their behaviors. Nevertheless, even though they want to stop obesity, right, they're, they're very bigoted against these, against these people. So, there's a kind of, there's a kind of discomfort with, in the, among the left. I think it's fair to say that the School of Public Health is more socially oriented in terms of interventions than medicine in general. And there's a, a kind of um, a kind of stigmatization of these people who also, by the way, right, over, overweight people who are discriminated against also suffer from more mental illness in part because, you know, the effects of discrimination are quite bad. And certainly, cigarette smokers are certainly among those who have higher rates of mental disorders. So, although they pretend to care about them, they don't really like them. Mm -hmm. And they make their lives miserable. So I wonder if there's not some sort of way we could, if we thought about it long enough, to see that this is also what's going on with mental illness, which is they can all talk, the, people can all talk the game about how we want to care about the mentally ill, but they're very uncomfortable around them, right? right? And they're very uncomfortable around obese people, and they're very uncomfortable around smokers. And so they tend to segregate them. Not necessarily through a conscious process, but through a, a kind of dynamic. And I think that's pretty interesting. Maybe that's part of the pushback you're feeling with that. Yeah, I and mean, I wonder if um, some of what I've been observing with the, with the stigma that I observed uh, is that 
people might be willing superficially to say that stigma against mental illness is morally wrong, but when you're shown the scientific evidence that it's scientifically wrong, that it's historically wrong, uh, they fight back and push back on it, which means that they really haven't absorbed the, the notion that stigma is, is not right. I think also many people have had experience with people who are mentally ill, and they feel pretty helpless around it. And um, they, although they see it as an illness, it's very hard sometimes to separate the illness from the personality of themselves. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so uh, there is a kind of continued segregation, I think. You know, it's a kind of accepted, right. an accepted kind of way we're supposed to look and act in our society. Mm -hmm. And the curious thing is that the people who keep arguing for diversity seem to be the less, open, the less open to it than the people who don't. Yeah, that is I, curious. It is curious, but. Um, but maybe the, these breakdowns between liberal and conservative are just about finished. Yeah, I maybe, think, maybe I think they may not explain these issues. Right. Um, and it, you know, some of it may also be that you know, these, the mainstream media establishment in our country is a little more liberal than not, and the um, outsiders are a little more conservative. And so in some ways, whenever you're the establishment, you tend to reject new ideas. And when you're an outsider, you might be a little more open to it, irrespective of what your specific ideology is. Right. Yeah. So which, that was in this new biography of George Kennan. Okay. Kennan spent his whole life trying to deal with American foreign policy, but he spent almost no time in America. That he <laughs> he tried to be, and he didn't like the average Americans mm -hmm. very much. Mm -hmm. So there's this kind of <coughs> old liberal bias that's not you know there's a kind of caring for people, mm -hmm. but there's also a kind of um, a contempt for the for ordinary. Yeah, lo loving humanity, but not loving human beings. Right, yeah, so I mean, I know, it probably hasn't changed much, but it does seem to me like trying to sit for everything on the liberal side or the conservative side, that we have a more complicated universe now, and it's time to... Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure how much of this is right, but I do know that in the, in the reactions that I've observed, uh, it's been very complicated, and, and there's no simple way of, of understanding why people react on one side or the other of, of this question. Well, you may have hit it. I mean, the establishment maintains itself as the establishment, right? And despite whether it's on the left or the right, it feels much more comfortable with other members that the establishment it, it does what the way people are. Yeah. Well, I guess we can wrap it up. Thanks. Okay, thanks.